Hey, well I'm here today with Dr. Puru Maradi, and Dr. Maradi is a specialist plastic surgeon and he works from Park Clinic here in um, Sydney and today we're going to have a chat about what he does and also about the Mativa breast implants. So thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure, pleasure being here, pleasure having you. Lovely. So tell us what, what surgery do you do? What's your specialty? What um, do you love? What do I love? Mm. Uh, not working. <laughs> no, no. Um, so I guess what I do uh, in the public hospital, mm. I do microsurgery for face and breast reconstruction, such as head and neck reconstruction and breast reconstruction after mastectomy. And I use the same yeah. skill set in the private, where I mainly do cosmetic operations of the breast and the face. So they're the, my you know, two subspecialty interests, I guess. Okay, okay. And like I know that um, you do use the Mativa breast implants, yeah. so can you tell us what is it that you love about the Mativa implants? Um, I guess... I've always been an anatomical implant guy um, for lots of reasons, but the major reason I like the anatomical implants was the gel, and the gel was form stable, it held its shape, and, and, and you knew, you just trusted it, you put it into a particular pocket and it created its shape. Now, the problem I had with the old saline implants, uh, I've got one just... The drawer full of implants here, it's like, whoa. Drawer full of implants is... One somewhere, I should have got it all ready. The problem with the old round implants oh, yeah. is that you didn't trust them to hold their shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you needed any support for the lower pole, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily a tuberous breast, but something that you needed that lower pole expansion um, whilst keeping the upper pole uh, shape, I just didn't trust the gel, the cohesive one gel of the other round implants that are on the market because I didn't trust that they'll hold the shape. Um, when, if you're putting an implant in, if a patient's got perfect breasts to start with and you're just trying to make them bigger, it probably doesn't make as much difference whether you go teardrop round or what sort of cohesiveness you use because they've got good shape anyway, you're just trying to make it bigger. And that's the, the American model where they just put saline implants in, you know? Because obviously for some people, saline implants, not that I'd ever use them, are good because they just do the job of making the breast larger. However, if you need shape, that's what teardrop implants have traditionally had. And what I like about the uh, Motiva is, it's just a good gel, okay? I like the, I like the gel because um, it's less rippling and it's a bit, well, I don't know if the firm is the right word, but it's got better elastic, as elastic properties, so I can trust that when I'm trying to do a more difficult type of breast augmentation, that I can trust the gel will hold its shape and not ripple and not, not deflate, but not lose its, support okay. the shape. So usually if someone gets like, that's it, yeah. isn't it? So if someone gets like the rippling, that's from just like, it's actually from the, it's the implant. Well it is, but I, I, I say to all patients, all implants ripple. Yeah. Okay. Over time they will yeah. ripple. In fact, breasts ripple. Mm -hmm. You know, if you bend over, if a woman breasts open, the, the, the breasts ripple. So yeah. rippling is like a normal phenomenon yeah. of, you know, any dynamic thing. Mm -hmm. However, you want an implant that ripples less. Mm -hmm. And that's why traditionally the form stable, whether Allergan or, or Mentor implants, of the, the cohesive three gel that they have rippled less because they're a bit firmer. And they're a bit under, and they're, but their round equivalents are softer and they're less filled. So what I like about the Motiva is it's fully filled implant. So you trust that it's gonna keep that shape. Yeah. Now, Will it, will it keep its shape with different body temperatures? I don't think anybody knows that, so it'd be naive to think that one implant won't ripple at all. Yeah. But on table, one doesn't ripple because of those mentioned properties and the other does. Under the muscle, different body temperatures may affect the viscosity or elasticity, but that's not important, it's what it does on table. Yeah, of course. So I've got a couple of questions, yeah. if you don't mind. Fire away. So can you tell us, how does the Mativa, Mativa Silk Nano Surface help to reduce complications that can be associated with um, breast implants? Uh, I don't think it can. <laughs> no, so I guess, what are complications? I mean, complications such as bleeding, um, you know, malposition and all that, I just think that's surgical technique, so you can't really blame an implant. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do like about the Motiva is that it is classified as a smooth mm -hmm. implant and in this day and age of ALCL, yeah. you have to be aware that that is a risk. Now, mentor implants are fantastic. They've got very low ALCL rates compared to the others. Um, and I guess with Motiva, we'll find out soon, but the classification of being smooth does help when you say to the patient, well, 
that risk is probably less than if you had the macro textured implants of, uh, of some, of some of the other companies. Yeah. So how does it reduce the risk? Well, it hopefully reduces ALCL, mm-hmm. who knows, mm-hmm. but at the moment it looks like it, it possibly can. Um, the fact that the ergo does act like a teardrop in a way, mm-hmm. then you kind of get rid of that animation, uh, the rotation as a risk. Right. A lot of patients are worried about rotation. Um, and it's a funny risk because the risk is still pretty low with teardrop implants, but it's a risk, risk nonetheless that yeah. the patient has to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, although the risks are in less than 5%, mm-hmm. it's still something that patients worry about. Yeah. So why do you, like, what, do you, what advice would you give to a patient who's looking to find a surgeon to you know, have implant surgery with? Like, what, should they, you know, what should they be aware of? Like, I guess the most important thing is aware of their goals. Yeah. Like, what are they going to? What are they trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. Um, because once they know what they want to achieve, then it's easier to relay that onto their surgeon, so that he or she can make, can guide them along that along yeah. that path. Because if a patient is a size twelve or fourteen, and they bring an Insta photo of a size six fitness model, mm-hmm. there's just that's just not going to happen yeah. because the goals are just totally separate. Mm-hmm. Others come in and go, well, I want a natural result. They go, okay, well, show me the Insta photos that you like. And they're all high profile fake look. So yeah. it's like, understand what the goals you want. Then I'd say to them, go on as many surgeons websites and look at their galleries. Mm-hmm. Because by our guidelines, you can't, the gallery photos have to be the same. Yeah. Um, and it's always good looking at naked before and afters mm-hmm. because there's no bra trickery, there's no selfie trickery. Yeah. So bringing in photos of patients in swimwear or fitness outfits, photos taken like that, yeah. everybody looks good from that angle. That's yeah. why people take that angle from, yeah. from that view. But getting other patients that look like you have had an implant similar to you, mm-hmm. and that's a good starting point. Because yeah. if you look good naked, you look good in a bra. Yeah. All right. So why do you reckon? Um, why do you think it's important for people to know what implants they have? Because like these, like. People don't really know what implants they're having put in. Like oh. I, I've had um, patients on our forum, and and we've said, you know, well, what sort of implants have you got? And they don't even know the size, let alone the brand, or yeah. you know. There's a lot. There's a lot of that, and when especially we come for revision operations, yeah. you're you're kind of shocked to see how little people know what implant they have in their in their body. Yeah. Even though you give that you they get the sticker and mm-hmm. they should have all that information. Um, I guess it's up to the surgeon a lot of the way, a lot of the surgeon guiding the patient on, on their goals. So um, patient education is important because now people, patients are asking for Motiva implants because of forums like yourself, people people discuss and chat. When patients come in, my, my discussion is pretty, pretty straightforward, whether you've got T-drop or round, if they automatically want round, then yeah. that's easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm using the Motiva, the decision is whether I use the Ergo, or the progressive gel, depending on the look that they're after. Okay. Now, if they do want teardrop, then the conversation goes, okay, here's teardrop, here are all the risks, as with anything, yeah. there's two extra risks with the teardrop that mm-hmm. you don't get with the ergo. What are they? Which is the rotation, mm-hmm. and potentially, because of the texturing, potentially ALCL. Okay. And then when you put it to them, and then you go, okay, all else being equal, with the breast platform that you have, mm-hmm. I think you'll get as good a result with a ergo motiva than a teardrop mm-hmm. the patients go okay well I get that if you, if you think I can still get that teardrop look then I say look get the get the ergo yeah. because I think you can now if a patient came in with a really tight lower pole tuberous breasts mm-hmm. they weren't, they we're not having that conversation about um, the motiva ergo because I still think you need that cohesive you need that, mm-hmm. that ex- expansion in that lower pole mm-hmm. um that you'd get more with a, a certain type of teardrop. Yeah, implant. right. So it's going to be, and I think they're bringing them out. So it's going to you, your conversation with them is going to be depending on what they need. Yeah, cor- yeah. correct. And I think nowadays with uh, with social media and with the forums like yours, patients are so educated. Yeah. Like they come in, they go, "I want order plus this, mm-hmm. blah blah blah," and then a lot of the time they're kind of nearly right. Yeah. You just have to guide them one way or another. And go, you yeah. know what? That's not going to work. They sometimes don't understand the different profiling, what, what is a profile. They think mm-hmm. projection and profile with how high it goes rather mm-hmm. than how far out it goes. Yeah. So once you let them know about that, then yeah. then they... So profile is yeah. projection? So, same thing. Profile okay. and projection, okay. 
Allegan and Mentor use different terminology, right. profile and projection, oh, okay. but they both mean the same thing. Oh, right, cool. So the analogy I say to patients is you're trying to build a house, mm-hmm. okay? And when you build a house, you have a parcel of land. If yeah. you've got a 200 parcel of land, you can't put a 400 house. Yeah. You look ridiculous. Yeah. But if you've got a 400 parcel of land, if you went and put a little shitty 200 house, it looks yeah. silly as well. You have yeah. a big gap. Yeah. So you build it to, you build a breast on your chest platform, yeah. your parcel of land. Okay. Then if you want to go bigger, once you've got the width, the height right, mm-hmm. then you can work on projection. So if you've got a 200 parcel of land, you want a 400 square house, mm-hmm. two stories mm-hmm. or three stories. Okay. So one story is a moderate, moderate two stories a moderate plus, mm-hmm. three stories a high profile or the mm-hmm. minis, the demis. That's a really good way to explain it. That, that, that helps, that yeah, helps that a lot. Yeah, that helps me. So yeah, I go, you know what? It sounds like you need a three story house. For yeah. your width and your height, yeah. you want high profile. Okay or the, the full implant, so that's a three-storey house. Yeah, all right. I've got a couple of other questions. Yep. Oh, sorry. So what, what type of patients do you think are best suited for a breast lift or ment? Um, I think, well, it's kind of reasonably straightforward. The, mm-hmm. the ones that, so there's different, dif- different styles of yep. breast lift and implant. Mm-hmm. If your nipple's below your crease, easy. You need a breast lift. Well, yeah. you need a breast lift, the decision to have an implant. When you say crease, like where? where oh, so if yeah. you, you've got your IMF crease here, yeah. and if your nipple is below it, yeah. okay. then you definitely need All a right. lift. So yeah. they're, 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 there's, there's the ones that definitely need lift. There's no yeah. there's no grey area. Yeah. It's those ones that are borderline mm-hmm. that, that becomes a difficult decision. Okay. And the ones that are difficult, uh, when the nipple is above the crease, mm-hmm. However, if you've got glandulatosis where most of the breast is below the crease, so although the nipple is above the crease, yeah. if most of the breast is hanging lower than the crease, mm-hmm. you need you need to lift on those ones as well okay. because you're trying to reshape the breast tissue. Yeah. So you're trying to create a perfect breast with the lift yeah. and then you're trying to augment that perfect shape with, with an implant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you Would you pick a different, like, would age come into this of the, the woman having the implants? As to which, no, it doesn't, no. okay. Not at all. I mean, age becomes an, an issue and previous weight loss or pregnancy mm-hmm. if you're trying to get away with the scarless breast lift. Mm-hmm. What is a scarless breast lift? That's when you're using an implant mm-hmm. to lift the breast up and you're only having a scar in the crease. Yeah. But in those particular situations, the nipple's usually in a good position. Yeah. You're just trying to fill out that lower pole yeah. uh, with an implant and that naturally lifts Okay, so when you see someone that's just got that little scar on the bottom, so they've just had just on the bottom of the yeah, 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 so that's a scarless breast lift, so it's quite simple to do. Well, it's like a breast augmentation, yeah. A scarless breast lift is a breast augmentation through a crease, but you're using a you know, generally a teardrop implant to try to kick out that lower pole. Okay, awesome. I've just got a couple other little questions. So, what what technique do you use with the Matiga and Mativa ergonomics implants to help achieve a soft, natural look? Um. The soft natural look, it's all back to the patient. Yeah. So if a patient has big breasts to start with, or mm-hmm. breasts to start with, mm-hmm. seen above, mm-hmm. they're always going to get a soft result because yeah. they've got so much soft tissue coverage. They've yeah. got breast and subcutaneous fat. Mm-hmm. They all, they're always going to feel soft. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if a patient has no breast tissue and skin mm-hmm. only, they're of course they're going to feel a bit firmer no matter what implant you use now what I like about the ergos is they are soft Mm -hmm. so in those patients that have limited breast tissue and limited subcutaneous fat it's a softer implant so they're going to get a softer result but I I say to patients it all comes down to percentages let's make the numbers up if you've got a 300 gram breast and you put a 300 gram implant in that means 50% of your breast is breast and 50% is implant. So you're going to have a more soft tissue coverage. Then if you've got a blank cavity, we've got no breast tissue, you've got a 50 gram breast, and then you put a 300 gram implant in. Yeah. So, you know, 85% of your breast now is implant. Of course, you're going to feel the implant more. Yeah. And conversely, if you've got a D breast, which is like an 800 gram breast, mm-hmm. and they're the tougher ones because patients go, I want that big fake look but you've got that much breast tissue and you put a 400 gram implant in, only one third of your breast is now implant, so yeah. it's hard to take the nice fake shape mm-hmm. when you've got so much of your own breast tissue. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna always feel soft and natural, yeah. whereas the ones with are totally empty. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, and one last one. So what's, if you can tell us about just one of the features that you like the most about the Mativa? Uh, I might name a few. All right, go on. Um, better. There's a few. Yeah. One, 
it, it just feels nice. So yeah. when you give it to a patient and go, okay, these are your choices. Yeah. Everybody chooses the Motiva just on tactile sensation yeah. because the gel feels good and the, the, the texture is good. Yeah, they do feel good. Um, the thing good. I also like, which is very minimal, but I really like, they come in 0.25 millimetre uh, base width ranges. Mm -hmm. So all the other traditional ones, they go from 12 centimetres to 12 and a half to 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I like about the Motiva is they go 12, 12.25, 12 12.5, 12 12.7. Oh, okay. You know, so the increment is. And you mean this part here? I mean the, the width, the width oh, yeah, of the, right. yeah. the width of the yeah. implant. Because okay. for me, the most important thing is the width. Yeah. So you get the width right, i.e. Yeah. the parcel of land. Yeah. Yeah. And then you work on projection. Okay. So I like that that it comes in point two fives mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty precise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just gives you more options. Yeah. Yeah. For the mm -hmm. asymmetrical cases. Yeah. Um. Oh, something I was going to ask you last question. What was it? Oh yeah. So what? So if someone's wanting to have a breast augmentation, yeah. why should they come and talk to you? Uh, why should it come to me? Actually, we'll just watch this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess back to what you asked previously, you know, what do they need to do to pick this? Yeah. First, you yeah. need to know your own goals. Yeah. Then you need to go on surgeons' websites and see the, the galleries, I think. Yeah. And then go see, uh, you know, I'd say two to three surgeons. Yeah. And the qualifications. But, yeah, I think the qualifications. Well, you yeah, hopefully go and see the, the you know, AMC accredited surgeon, such as a plastic surgeon, mm -hmm. to do your operation. And once you've narrowed it down then I think then you, it just becomes a feeling that you have with your surgeon because hopefully you've only you've picked somebody who, who you trust their work mm -hmm. so tick then yeah. you've looked at the qualifications the, yeah. the part of ASP the part of the plastic surgeon tick so the next is do they listen to you can they do they get what you're trying to do, get mm -hmm. what they're trying to do mm -hmm. um, so you, I mean if you want to buy a car you go to see two or three dealers anyway anything yeah. you do you see a couple of dealers so yeah. it's a similar principle try to see as many people as you can it's kind of impractical having to pay the consult fee every mm -hmm. time I wouldn't recommend seeing five or six because you're going to get five or six different opinions and yeah. that will really Confusion. drive you nuts yeah. so I think two two maybe three mm -hmm. I wouldn't go more than three mm -hmm. um, and then see which ones yeah but then you'll kind of know who you're more comfortable with you know that everyone's yeah. probably going to have a different opinion yeah. as to implants as well and you'll know you know you'll feel what's right for you yeah. Just go with it. The thing is, when everything goes well, it's all fun and games. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. You just want someone there if things don't go well. Yeah. That they've got your back and they're not going to throw you throw you out. Yeah. And that's the key. Yeah. With anything, back yeah, to totally. buying a car. Totally. If the car's not working, you'd want to go to someone that goes, "Hey, you know what? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We'll try to fix it." Yeah, totally. One of the things I like about these implants, which um, if you can yeah. tell me what you think of them, I like the fact that because ladies all the time they don't know what implants they've got, yeah. what they've used, whereas with these. You actually know forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got the chip. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us, yeah, tell us about that. So oh, these, the, the, each of them have got a number, or they, they've got yeah, they've got the number, and then you just scan them, and I've tried to scan, and it works. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. I've had patients say, "Can you remove the chip?" Mm -hmm. uh, which I said no to. Yeah. So I don't know how to remove the chip. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that that is a that is a very important mm -hmm. fact factor as well. The the thing mm -hmm. is, what I like. That Motiva has done. the The implant market was in such a stagnant state, yeah. um, and there was very little innovation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they try to do the the light implants and the polyurethanes, mm -hmm. and I don't think they they work for so many different mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. But it was good that these guys or girls, I don't know who, who designed it, try to think differently. Yeah. And the texturing is important. I love the texturing, but if you said what, what do I love most about it I, I like the gel yeah yeah. I really like the Actually, gel of it everyone says that yeah because yeah. um, I was asking before I like, like implants haven't changed in yeah. what 20 30 years yeah there's, there's been like, and you know what I think what this will do next generation yeah, implant I think what this will do will um, get the old other companies mm -hmm. to proverbially pull their fingers out mm -hmm. and try to innovate and try to do well. Yeah, yeah, just um, it's all about continuous improvement, hey? Yeah, correct. With everything we do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the My time pleasure. to join us today. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, ladies, if you're looking at having breast implant surgery and you're after Mativa implants and you're after a great surgeon, um, don't look past um, Dr. Maradi and you can find him here at the Park Clinic. You can find him, you can either Google him or you can yeah. check out our website as well. So, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.